Hello, Kathy Frey here from IMCO, and welcome to this week's uh, Maternity Natural Health webinar. Um, so I can see that uh, some of you are starting to sign on in, which is wonderful. And um, please do uh, go into the chat area um, and let us know whereabouts you are in the world and um, what your role is. That would be wonderful to hear and um, fantastic. So we've got the wonderful Bernadette Liza here today. Bernadette, say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Um, Bernadette has just got the most amazing um, background. Her, her CV is pretty incredible. Um, so I'm just going to go over that with you guys. So Bernadette is a registered midwife and a body therapist specializing in, uh, in massage, aromatherapy, bone theory, reflexology, and hypnobirthing. Um, she's also a mother and a proud grandmother. Um, and Bernadette uh, graduated as a direct entry midwife in 1975 in France. Um, at the time, Michelle Odon um, was promoting home-like um, birthing rooms and Frederick uh, Leboya was promoting birth without violence. And those philosophies have been the cornerstone of her practice ever since. Um, she also trained in sophro sophrology, if I said that right, yes, Bernadette? Yes. <laughs> yeah, which is a form of hypnobirthing. Um, she moved to Australia in 1982, uh, where she had to re-qualify as a midwife, which is always very frustrating for our immigrants. Um, while waiting for that registration, um, she studied medical herbalism, aromatherapy, nutrition and massage, and eventually started a private home birth practice um, where those new skills proved very beneficial. And then after eight years, um, her interest took her to a birth center and then to a midwifery group practice within the hospital system. Um, and it's there that uh, she was introduced to other midwives and health professionals, or she introduced other midwives and health professionals to complementary therapies. And along with um, midwife Linda Mollard, um, uh, she wrote guidelines and ran education sessions on reflexology, aromatherapy, acupressure, sterile water injections, um, and complementary therapies in pregnancy. She then became the Towards Normal Birth Midwife offering workshops on how to keep birth normal, support VBACs and to brief, uh, debrief women and their partners. Um, and these days, Bernadette has a private practice offering massage, bone therapy, hypnotherapy and runs workshops with Lyndall um, on reflexology, acupuncture and complementary, complementary therapies. Um, in pregnancy um, in, Australia, in both Australia and Japan. So um, just an um, amazing, amazing um, encyclopedia uh, library of knowledge. Um, and so in this particular webinar, we are going to explore ways to integrate complementary therapies into midwifery practice and um, what you can put in your toolbox to help keep birth normal, support VBAC and um, help with birth trauma and obviously we're just going to be a little bit of a tip of the iceberg today um, because you know I, I'm sure Bernadette could spend hours uh, <laughs> lecturing to us or, you know, as a tutor on all of these. So look let's um, kind of get, just turn the clock back a little bit. Um, Bernadette can you tell us um, how did you get involved in uh, natural therapies in your midwifery practice? How did that all come about? It's, um, I, I grew up in France and I suppose it was part of uh, what we, you know, natural therapies was part of what we did at home. Mm. Um, we had a big garden. My mother always used herbs. You know, we had a tea for every, she had a tea for everything. So when, you know, when we were sick, uh, she would, you know, pluck something out of the garden and make a tea. And uh, I remember we used to, when we were kids, we used to go and collect some herbs, like in, you know, like around um, the, the village where we were living. Um, mm. Um, and, you know, she collected mulein, mulein, which was like a herb, um, that, you know, that she made for um, teas, you know, when we had a cough or cold or, um, and it was just part of, of, of what we did. And I grew up on, um, 
on the German border in in uh, in France. And um, so we, you know, if we had something a bit more serious, then we'd go over the border and we'd see naturopaths because it was natu naturopathy was very popular there, and there were lots of homeopaths. So we had a homeopath we used to go to. Um, so basically, it's just something that I grew up with, and um, mm -hmm. it sort of evolved um, evolved from there. Um, and we, we, we just use, you know, like the, the, chemi like the pharmacies, when we used to go to pharmacies in, in France or in Germany, they had a section for allopathic medicine and a section for, um, um, you know, homeopathy or herbal medicine. You, you could choose what you wanted. And I remember when I went over with my son, um, he was five months old, he had a bit of a cold. I went into a pharmacy and they said, um, you know, what would you like? You know, you, we can give you medication or you can have suppositories made with time. And of course, I went with the suppositories that are all made with time. So it was it was part of what we did. Um, and um, it yeah. used like nature's uh, wonders to sort of help ourselves first. Um, so that's how I got into it when I was younger. Um, and then when I, when I went into, like uh, when I studied midwifery, it was in, I was in Strasbourg, um, like the main hospital. And, um, and part of the, the, some of the remedies we used were herb remedies. So we had, for example, we had horse, horse chestnut that was um, dispensed by the pharmacy of the hospital. And we used to give that to the women for varicose veins or hemorrhoids. And, you know, we made compresses and things like that. So it was even part of our midwifery sort of training, not a great deal, but there were, it was part of it. Um, so it was like a natural pro progression. Um, when I came to Australia, um, and, um, you know, I started sort of, you know, looking into, into becoming a midwife. I had a bit of trouble getting registered because I was direct entry. And, um, you know, that asked me to, you know, redo nursing, which I didn't want to do. So I thought, well, if I'm going to study something, I might as well study uh, something that I'm interested in. So that's why I studied uh, herbalism with Dennis Stewart and uh, nutrition massage. And that's where it sort of all started. And when I eventually got registered, um, I started a home birth practice. And so those remedies came in really handy um, for me because, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, birth is normal and, you know, I'm a great believer in really not interfering with birth and because uh, women know what they're doing, the body knows what, you know, what, um, what it does, but, you know, if, you know, every now and then you need a little bit of help. And certainly those remedies like the homeopathics and some of the herbal remedies um, were part then of my birth kit um, when, uh, when I was doing, when I was attending home birth. Um, when I eventually worked in the, in the birth center, um, I, um, I had developed, at that stage, I had developed um, like sheets on, you know, like discomforts of pregnancy and how you can help um, alleviate some of these comforts with natural remedies. And the other midwives were really interested. So um, we, we had those sheets and they would give the sheets out to the women. They, you know, I did some education for the midwives and then they would, you know, they would sort of advise the women on, on uh, you know, what to use, say, you know, for varicose veins in, in, in pregnancy or if they had heart burn or um you know hemorrhoids um whatever you know morning sickness and um and it became very popular so um even the doctors said oh you know give them some of your lotions and potions and uh it sort of it developed from there so we we had like those you know sheets that you know we give out to women and then eventually the manager uh you know said you're really interested in you know in in, in the natural therapy so uh, she actually got a homeopath um, to um, give us, a, like, develop a course for us, for the midwives. So all the midwives did a course on homeopathy for midwives, and we had a kit of about 50 remedies um, that we could use for, um, for Gosh, the women. Okay. And this was in Australia? In Australia. And it was a long time ago, doing? and it, it wouldn't yeah. happen now, but uh, it was, you know, like, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what sort of year were we talking about then? Um, talking about 1990. So yeah, about wow. thirty years ago. Thirty years ago, yeah, it was yeah. very progressive, mm. and um, uh, and we didn't, you know, I mean, since then, you know, when I when I came to the hospital that I work now, um, you know, we sort of had to develop guidelines and you know and look at the evidence. So and that's what I'm telling people, you know, look at the evidence first, make sure there's some evidence, make sure that the research has been done, and then you know, if you want to develop guidelines, if you want to get it happening, you know, in in your hospital, you need to have that, and uh, and then you have to, you know, it has to go through, you know, like ethics and you know. Uh, 
clinical practices like there's a lot of people that need to be involved if you want to you know use it and and uh, integrate it into you know into hospital settings now so i, I was lucky that um i had yeah. that <laughs> do you do you i mean we understand those protocols um you know within the the health system now but does do you feel that you must feel some frustration from that as well that you know you it, it's so difficult for you to perhaps or you know for midwives to give a remedy which you just know is the right thing or how do you feel about the fact that you had such you know broad access and now there's such limited access it, uh, it is sometimes frustrating, but I can understand, you know, the safety issues. And for example, you know, like we, we were using um, aromatherapy as well. I studied aromatherapy and aromatherapy is, you know, like they're, they're um, chemical constituents that can actually, you know, can be dangerous. So people need to know what they're using. And, you know, I see nowadays, you know, a lot of people use aromatherapy. There's, there's American companies that, yeah, you can use it internally. I've got a bit of a problem with that um, because mm. I think a lot of people are not aware that it's actually quite powerful you know chemical um you know they are quite powerful um chemicals in there so mm. in a way i think it is good that um you know we have some safeguards in place and people know what they're doing and people certainly you know midwives and women need to be educated as to you know what they can use and and they have to use it safely so um you know i'm i'm, I'm actually you know i think it is a good thing so you know it, it would have been a bit frustrated but you know, there need to be safeguards and we need to make sure that people use it in a very responsible way. Because, um, you know, sometimes in, you know, I see where I work, you know, like sometimes, you know, I, I did establish a, um, a, a aromatherapy sort of you know i had aromatherapy kit and um you know sometimes we'd go oh yeah it's just a bit of oil and we just you know put a few drops in or they might put 10 drops or 15 drops and i always say you need to really make sure you know what you're using it for how much you use it and you need to stay within you know the guidelines because you can overdose you can you know you can use too too much mm -hmm. so people really need to know be educated and need to know what they're using and what they are using it for Absolutely. And um, but how well, how are you sort of integrating those complementary therapies into the hospital setting now? You know, how what are you do you guys doing over there with regards to, um, you know, get, giving that education? So so it, it happens that? with a lot of people on board so you know you can't do it by yourself so there needs to be an interest from other midwives and there needs to be um you know you need to have really um you know like managers and and uh, consultants and and you know medical uh, you, you know the, um the, the doctors as well need to be on board so when we um when i first um started you know, you know with the aromatherapy for example um it's because the women were coming in with the essential oils you know they come into labor mm -hmm. and then we go i don't know what to do you know what mm -hmm. she's using this and that and uh, so that you know some women were interested in sort of using it and so i thought well this is really a place to um, maybe get the midwives educated so they know what they can use and yeah. um, and then so it was driven really by uh, the public uh, you know for right. this particular modality um, so uh, and that's how we could you know like we, we could actually you know start it like establish it so um, because there was a demand from the women um, we, we sort of went you know we we, we formed a, 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 um, a committee like a working party and in that working party was myself there was uh, Lindo uh, who was manager of the antenatal clinic at the time we had uh, the CMC like the midwife consultant we had a pharmacist on board we had uh, the lady mm. was running the antenatal classes so we had a big sort of working party and we sort of met um, you know every week or every fortnight and then we sort of developed you know with, with what we can use how we can use it how we can use it safely um, and it was really good to have a pharmacist on board because you know he, mm. he had all the, the the scientific sort of you know background as well uh, and then eventually we sort of um you know uh, 
proposal and um, our consult midwifery consultant went, you know, went through ethics, went through the ethics committee. She had to sort of explain, uh, you know, why and you know, you know, if it is safe. And uh, and then we sort of developed a um, a guideline and we decided, you know, which oils, you know, we were going to use. But that was all based on study, you know, like there was a study at the time that was done by Burns and Blaney, and they had used it in England. Um, they used, you know, quite a few oils in England, and they, they had really good. Um, you know, good outcomes with that. So, uh, you know, we needed to have some evidence behind it before we could establish it. So, um, so yeah, we developed a guideline and uh, and now developed an educate like education sessions and uh, competencies for the for the midwives and only the midwives who were um, you know competent, deemed competent, had done the course for deemed competent. Um, mm. You know, were able to use the aromatherapy oils. And then, of course, you have to audit it. So we I had an audit sheet and you know I was reviewing all the um, the cases that uh, you know where the oils were used and and I kept um, you know statistics you know, afterwards just to, you know we did that for a couple of years just to make sure that it was um, that it was safe um, and for a time the pharmacy was actually dispensing the essential oils so they decided which wow. company we were using so I had to send them mm -hmm. the, the data sheet of all the different oils we were using we had seven oils and um, so they um, they looked at the, the you know the, the the data sheets of all the oils, decided which company we're going to order from, and uh, and then they would dispense um, the oils. That has sort of uh, stopped now. So we we just it's just part of what we do now in the birthing suite. So um, that's still an operation now. Yes, yes, yes. We still yes. use essential oils, uh, and uh, I'm sort of I've, I've trained another midwife to to do the training. So I was an aromatherapist. Mm -hmm. So uh, and there's another midwife who's an aromatherapist who can you know uh, offer the training. So we still use essential oils. We still have, uh, you know, we use sterile water injections. We've got a, a guideline for uh, reflexology. Uh, we had a guideline for reflexology. Uh, we've got a guideline for acupressure. So same thing uh, with the acupressure. We had a working party and um and then we sort of developed you know um a guideline and um and we you know we had education sessions as well that uh, are run you know throughout the hospital for um, the midwives to be able to use it um so oh, we've got quite a few guidelines it's just absolutely fantastic um you know you you are doing uh, or you've achieved there what so many have not um and so just because we are dealing with an international audience, can you explain a little bit more about the particular um, hospital facility? So it is a, um, a rural hospital. Um, we do about three 3,000 births a year. Um, and um, it is, you know, um, like the, the local, um, it, it's just a local sort of health facility. So it's not, it's not a birth center. I used to work in a birth center. It's not a birth center. It's just a, uh, a maternity, like a, a, a normal sort of, you know, hospital facility, um, you know, like in England, like the NHS, and, you know, like it's, it's just part of, of um, the, the local health, um, you know, district hospital. Um, and um, it, um, we, so we've got teams working that, there. Pardon? For example, what, how many birthing rooms, how many postnatals, just to kind of put it. Uh, so we do, we, we have, a, we do about 3,000 births a year uh, mm -hmm. in that hospital and uh, we have got about 32 postnatal beds mm -hmm. and then we run clinics so we have clinics uh, that are on-site and off-site so we've got mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of clinics that are you know run in the community and um, so we you know women for quite you know quite you know, a, a big area that uh, you know come to the hospital we've got quite a few teams so we've got midwifery group practice we've got three different teams of midwifery group practice you know like you know, um, south and north of um, of the region, and uh, and they you know they, they sort of um, because it's for low risk women and and they want to keep birth normal. Uh, they're big um, users of uh, the complementary therapies. Um, so you know we still um, you know will promote. Um, you know we've I've got a sheet on acupressure for example. So um, when women are overdue, then you know we sort of the midwives go through. Um, you know, like the acupressure techniques, some of the points that they can use to, um, you know, prime for labor. Um, and, you know, we've got quite a few different, um, you know, uh, modalities that, you know, that we can offer, you know, at the hospital. It's so. just absolutely wonderful. And um, I, I wonder, I'm interested, what's the birth outcome steps like? 
We uh, haven't really looked at the birth. I mean, wh when um, when I did the audit on on uh, on aromatherapy and uh, and I did when I introduced our water injections, um, that was about ten or fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, uh, we we did an audit, and we again for the star water injections to introduce that it took about you know eighteen months. You know, for the mm -hmm. aromatherapy as well, so it takes a long time, mm -hmm. and a lot of people on board. So we had uh, for the star water injections for low back pain in labour, for example. Example, we had um, the, the, the anesthetists were on board, so they helped with the data collection as well. And uh, so we, uh, I kept some data afterwards. You know, we we had like a period of time when we introduced it, and then I did an audit uh, on you know the outcomes of the women who have um, used uh, sterile water injection for low back pain in labour, and we compared it to the general population. And what we found, we I had uh, anesthetist Daniel Orr who uh, helped me with the data collection, and we actually found that uh, for the population and for that period of time when we we use the star watching, I mean, we still use it, but when we were analyzing the data, um, we had a reduction in um, uh, in the cesarean section. So the women, the women who used our water injection had less um, cesarean sections and also uh, they use less, um, you know, like epidural. So ep the epidural use uh, was reduced. Uh, I think the gas, I haven't, I haven't got it here because I've, you know, I've, it's all in my, in my notes when I, when I, um, when I run the workshops for star water injection, but um, we, we had, uh, the, you know, the satisfaction was, um, was, in, you know, improved in the, in the women using star water injections and and certainly they use you know a lot less epidurals um the, the the one result that we got from that uh, was that there was a similar amount or maybe a little bit more um of instrumental births like vacuum um and uh, and forceps so they had less cesarean sections but mm -hmm. you know since the sterile water injections are usually used for low back pain in labor and often low back pain in labor is associated with um, malposition, yeah. you know, either posterior or acyclitic mm -hmm. or malposition, uh, it makes a bit of sense that you might have to use, a, you know, a few more instrumental, um, um, you know, a few more instruments. Absolutely. So yeah. tell us, um, what does your tool kit um, to keep birth normal look like? What are your go-tos? So for me, uh, I'm, I'm not working in birthing suite anymore, but I, I, you know, it starts before, it actually starts mm. antenatally. So I think if you yeah. help a woman being comfortable, you know, comfortable in pregnancy um, and uh, alleviate some of the minor discomforts. And what I found is that a lot of women say, oh, I go to the doctor and they can't help, you know, there's, no, there's nothing they can do. It's just something, it's part of the pregnancy. We, I just have to live through it. And, you know, very often with some of the complementary therapies, some of, you know, some of the um, you know, the remedies we, we can give them. For example, a woman, you know, come in antenatally and, you know, she's got sciatica and we've got a, a trigger point uh, in reflexology that works really well for sciatica and it's self-help. The women can do it themselves so they don't have to go to somebody. They can just do it themselves. When the pain comes, they can use, for example, they can use that trigger point. And I've had women coming in say, oh, I feel so much more comfortable. You know, it has mm -hmm. helped. So I can, you know, when I have the sciatica comes, I can just get my husband to do it or my partner or I can do it myself and uh, so little things like that you know antenatally if you can make them a little bit more comfortable like um, you know varicose veins a lot of women suffer from vulvar varicose veins mm. and you know there's not much you can do but you know you can use compressors with witch hazel for example or a couple of lemon oil and it makes it a lot more comfortable and they can go through their days uh, uh, you know a lot happier so if you can do that for the women you can help them in little ways um, they you know like by the time they come to that you know to the birth um, you know they they um, they're more comfortable you know they've enjoyed their pregnancies mm. a little bit a, more a so really you know the toolkit is you know point. like all those uh, you know those remedies that I have you know antenatally and then in in labor um, it's sometimes I must say you know it was hard to remember I had all those skills because I you know there's so many things that you can do that you yes. can do to help out that sometimes I forgot oh you know I could have used this or I could have used that Right. So my to go to uh, in in um, in the birthing suite, I think acupressure. Um, I mm. used it a lot, and uh, and there's you know a couple of midwives who've taken it on board, and uh, and I actually sort of champions in the birthing suite because you know sometimes you have other 
midwives say, oh, she's got good results. You know, she has really good outcomes or, uh, or they call her in, you know, or they call me and say, oh, I've got this, you know, uh, the, um, the head's not coming down or, um, you know, something's happening. Can you, have you got something you can help? And then you show them a point they can use, you know, if the baby's posterior or, you know, in second stage or the placenta doesn't come out, you know, mm -hmm. you're waiting for the placenta to come out and you do everything necessary medically, you know, because you, you have to stay safe. But, you know, there's, um, then you can, you know, you can say, oh, yeah, just do the shoulder point, you know, do your gallbladder um, 21 or, you know, do another point that might help. And in the meantime, the placenta comes out, you know, so they, yeah. you know, they don't have to go um, to, um, you know, to, to, uh, to theatres. For example, postnatally, you know, like often they, you know, there's a woman on, you know, she just had a baby, she's just birthed and we're waiting for her to go on the ward or to go home, but her blood is full and she can't wee. So, um, you know, and we can't send her anyway because we, we, you know, we don't want her to, you know, to have a bleed mm. because the blood is full. Um, so, you know, very often say, can you come in? Can you just do your magic thing? And um, so it's just the reflexology, you know, it's called the um, urinary system flush. Um, very simple, just do that. And, you know, probably about 80% of the time you do that and then they were in the next five or 10 minutes. Um, you know, I did it on babies at home as well. Um, so, you know, there's lots of little little things that make life, you know, a little bit easier. So my mm. go-to in birthing suite would have been, um, you know, like reflexology and, um, and acupressure. Um, and those are probably the two things that were, you know, were in my toolkit. But you've got, you know, the, there's, um, we've, when I was a towards normal birth midwife, part of the, um, you know, we run workshops. So we, the, our hospital was amalgamated with a couple of uh, big city hospitals. And with all the towards normal birth midwives, we developed workshops where we, um, uh, we run them in all the different hospitals. And part of the, um, you know, those workshops was education on acupressure, um, talked about sterile water injections, um, about, you know, water immersion. Uh, we had, um, you know, also, you know, like debriefing, you know, work on the emotional. And that's a big thing, you know, it, it's not a natural remedy, but really it is part of any midwifery practice. We need to listen to the women. We need to tune in to see what's happening for them. We need to find out emotional emotionally you know where what's happening you know they get stuck or if you you know they need to be guided through sometimes you know that um that is important as well so it's, it's oh absolutely like, uh, we become a, a counselor slash psychotherapist through them as well yeah yeah, yeah. um it's just fascinating so so of all of those i find it interesting that of all of those different areas that you've um got training in and knowledge in um, you know, your two favorite go-tos have ended up being acupressure and reflexology, um, which is, is just fascinating. And are you, um, do you do any, uh, again, I'm thinking of the sort of international audience that we have, but do you do any trainings um, beyond, you know, locally in Australia on those two topics? Uh, we, but with Lyndall Mollard, we do run workshops. So we get invited. So, you know, some of the hospitals say, you know, we've, uh, you know, do you want to run a workshop for our midwives? Um, so when, you know, when we invited, we sort of run uh, workshops on acupressure. So we've got a full day workshop on acupressure, for example. We've got a full day workshop on, uh, uh, on reflexology. We actually got a course. We run the course on reflexology uh, for midwives. It's a 40 and hour I course. Guess all of those workshops have traditionally been in person. Um, and uh, have you have you considered maybe doing anything online that sort of takes it to a, a broader audience? Or, you know, and, and of course, not just so that other people beyond, you know, locally would have access, but also we've got the whole COVID thing, of course. Yeah, um, yeah I just wanted, I mean, I, you've got so much knowledge there. I just want to spread you around. <laughs> Um, uh, we, we have thought about it because I run those workshops with Linda Mollard, who was one of you panel, you know, one yes. of you speakers. Yes, um, she's been and on that um, that. so we've, you know, we've been running that, like the acupressure, the reflexology, uh, been doing like a, a whole day of complementary therapies. Uh, mm. But we we sat down uh, not long ago and we said we need to get on and uh, you know change the format probably because of the times we live in, mm. and uh, so we are going to um, you know probably next 
year, uh, see if we can develop, you know, we actually talked about developing uh, like the reflexology course online, online. but there's yeah. always, you know, with those things, there's a part that's, you know, like the, the reason why, you know, when you said, you know, I like acupressure and, and reflexology is because it's hands-on. You don't need yeah. anything, you know, it's not yeah. like aromatherapy when you need an oil, you just, you got your hands and that's all you need. So it's very easy. It's transportable. Mm -hmm. You can use it anywhere. And um, so, you know, for the reflexology, for example, you know, like we can run, uh, you know, the course, but then, you know, we need to sort of find out how we can, um, you know, look at the skill, you know, like, uh, you know, midwives developing the skills. And, and so we still need a little practical component. So we're looking at that, you know, running it yeah. online and then maybe have like a day, you know, where people can get together and we can actually do the practical because there's always um, a practical aspect of it. So you need to, you know, mm. you need to get your hands on, you know, on some feet or, you know, on some bodies mm. you need to practice. Um, with, um, you know, with the acupressure, I mean, you know, I have to acknowledge, you, you know, Deborah Betts is, yes. um, you know, and she's you, you know, <laughs> she's from New Zealand. So she has been absolutely wonderful. And um, yes. so you for know, those who missed, missed that name, Deborah Betts, so D-E-B-R-A and then Betts, B-E-T-T-S. She's a um, uh, Kiwi-based uh, acupuncturist who has uh, acupressure, has um, developed a fantastic training specifically for midwives. Mm. And uh, yeah, and acupuncture as well. And she's got a fantastic mm -hmm. website. She's got YouTube clips. Anybody can access uh, her website and look at the YouTube clips. So uh, for her, you know, when we talk about hands-on, um, what she's done is, is um, you know, show people how, it's, how to locate the points and how to use them. And it's really fantastic. So when I work with women and I show them points, I say always, you know, go to her website. Um, she's also got an app. So, you, you know, women right. or midwives can download the app on their phone. Um, and, you know, she produced a CD with Tom Keneally, you know, uh, with another acupuncturist from the UK. Uh, they produced a, um, a DVD um, with, um, you know, with all, you know, the philosophy behind it and the point, you know, the points to use and how to locate the points. So there's quite a lot of resources available and um you know for women and, and midwives to use so um yeah so you know to answer your questions we are thinking of developing some online um yes. you know especially um, i guess you know that you know we're, we're kind of in this whole zoom world now yes. and um so we've got you know um access to stuff that we didn't used to have access to um of being able to do that and i think that covid has you know certainly changed people's um evolved people's thinking as to how we can discuss things yes. and um so it's so fascinating and i guess gosh some of your midwives if they are working at your hospital and then they shift to a, a different one somewhere else they must get a little frustrated sometimes <laughs> thinking, oh why don't you yours why doesn't your facility do what we were doing at the other place yeah I suppose so but we had some student midwives for example you know that were really interested and uh, and then when they graduated they went to other hospitals so you know some of them have actually been able to introduce some of uh, you know those techniques in other hospitals or you know sometimes this you know when they established midwives say can you come and run a workshop for us so we have oh, uh, we have run workshops on, on different great. modalities um, because we've been asked and they wanted yes. you know other midwives to um, to be able to use some of those um, you know some of those um, um, remedies or some of those techniques absolutely wonderful yeah. so actually that's a good point so um, what advice would you give um, midwives starting out and student midwives um, you know what with the student midwives are you know nowadays you know everything has to be um evidence-based so you know i said if you want to introduce something if you're interested in something look at the evidence look at the research you need to be able to say yes you know we're using it um you know because there is some you know evidence although if you look at the cochrane you know the mm -hmm. the, the, the cochrane um reviews will always say you know further research is needed and mm -hmm. um yeah and which is you know we do need to continue um researching so yeah i would tell them um yeah, do your research and uh, and then be open 
you know, be open-minded, do it for the women, you know, like everything is woman-centered. Um, you, you want to, you know, you want to help the women, you want them to have the best experience possible. So, uh, you know, that needs to be the main, uh, the main focus and, um, and then learn, you know, never stop learning. You know, there's always um, more, um, things that you you know you can and and not just conventional you know because what I find sometimes is that you know um, midwives might attend our classes and then I might you know bump into them later on have you used this have you used the acupressure oh I'm a bit um, you know I'm I'm not confident enough and I said you become confident by doing it you know mm -hmm. and it's if you have mind first do no harm you know and for example acupressure you can't do any harm you know, you're not going to do anything that's going to hurt them. So, you know, if you keep that, you know, do no harm and, and just use it. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But, you know, the it, worst it, thing that can happen is nothing happens. Yeah, that's exactly right. So go embrace it, you know, and use yeah. it. And it's like with any learning, you know, I tell people, you know, you come here and learn, um, then you have to use it straight away. You know, don't wait, you know, use it tomorrow, the day after to consolidate what you've learned with any learning and then, you know, continue and you build up on that. So don't wait, you know, don't wait to sort of think, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not confident, I'm not good enough, I've just learned it. But this is part of learning, you know, you just use it and then you continue using it and then reflect, you know, like I'm a big believer in reflective journaling, you know, as part of, you know, any, you know, for midwives, for, you know, for a lot of, um, a lot for of humans. Other, you know, professions, yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, like journaling. So if you say you have, you looked after somebody um, and you, you sort of, you know, you, you followed them through, you had great experience or not so great experience, just write it down, you know, and journal mm. what you've been doing. Keep tabs, you know, like I used to, when I was doing acupressure, uh, I used to say, oh yeah, I've used this for that, you know, and this worked really well. Um, so I used to keep, um, you know, little notes, you know, de-identified, but, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. just so that I, it reminds myself. And also, you know, like when you teach, you know, like you need to be able to tell stories and um, because that's what consolidates the learning. You know, you need some practical examples. Say, oh, well, I've, you know, I've had this woman who was doing this and that, and then I used that, um, that point or that remedy or, uh, and this is what works. So, um, you know, you need to sort of um, make it real. And, um, and then for the midwives, I say, you know, keep tabs, you know, write it down, have, have a journal and, and, and continue learning. You know, there's always new, you know, new modalities, there's new things and not necessarily conventional, you know, like, uh, you know, you've got your mandatory education, but get outside, you know, your mandatory education, mm -hmm. look at what else, um, you know, you want to learn that could help your practice and could help the women that you're looking after. And ultimately, that's what it is. You know, you want to work for, the women you're looking after and their families and their ba and their babies and um you know oh, make, make indeed, their you are you are just such an inspiration i want to put you up on a pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> just fabulous fabulous and we need like a little miniature at one of you and every little birthday location <laughs> i think um, what it is fabulous. you just have to have an interest i'm just passionate about normal yes. birth I'm passionate about you know looking after women it makes me happy you know it, it makes me happy to make sure you know like to know that somebody it's a really important time in somebody's life you know mm -hmm. this is and you have to keep that in mind you know as a midwife you, it, it's precious you know those when you the time you spend with the, the women and their families is really precious and even a, a one little crossword you know something you say might have a really big impact so you know when I was debriefing I did VBAC clinic I'll run a VBAC clinic for you know for quite a while and part of um, you know that you know helping women achieve a VBAC or considering a VBAC uh, what well, first of all you need to unpack what happened you know yeah. last time oh, you need to actually okay. go back and unpack and yeah. you know very often it's just a little thing you know, not, it's something, you know, somebody said to, you know, uh, a midwife to a woman or, or a doctor or somebody said to her that might just trigger, you know, uh, you know, her not having confidence in herself or feeling worthless or feeling, and, you know, I'm sure that the people, you know, who's, who's said that didn't realise it, but I think we have to be no, really... And it's stuck with her, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. You, you, just, you do see that, you really yeah. do, don't you? Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that. Yeah that baggage that's left behind because nobody ever really debriefed over yeah. it and it would have been something quite simple but it's yeah. haunted her in a way yeah, yeah. 
Um, and it's important, you know, I mean, I've always mm -hmm. found that when you look after, you know, laboring woman or laboring fam, look at that, you look at the emotional side, look at what's happening mm -hmm. for them. Look, you know, have a feel of their, their um, um, you know, where they're at. And very often, I mean, when I was doing home birth, um, you know, because you don't have the symptosin and the epidural, the, you know, all the help, you really need to use your other skills. Mm -hmm. And um, and very often, I, you know, um, you, 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 if you listen, you're in tune with what's happening, you know, with the woman thinking, oh, you know, something is, you know, it's a bit stuck somewhere. So, you know, ask yeah. a few questions. Now, if there's one thing that you, you use so much in a home birth or rural birth centre birth mm. is your own gut instinct as a midwife. Yes. Yeah. You know, you yeah. just, yeah. boy, you have to rely on that one. Yeah. Um, I, now, I know that you've mentioned um, sterile injections. Um, uh, a little bit today and and I'm familiar with them myself but I I know that perhaps some of our audience isn't um so could you just give like a little explanation overview on that so a sterile water injection is the injection of uh, sterile water it can also be uh, normal saline on four um little points in the lower back so the in intradermal so it's just just under the skin and uh, you inject about half a mil to a mil and to create a bleb. So, you know, what you do is like, you know, as kids, we play and we put needles under the skin. So it's a little bit like that. You put, you know, you, you, uh, you basically kind of and creating then, a little bubble, a little bubble. Yeah. Yes. So you create, um, you know, two or four, like, you know, mm -hmm. normally we do four uh, at certain points in the, in the lower back. And, um, and what that does, it creates um, uh, kind of a feedback with you know feedback to the to the yeah. brain where it sort of blocks um, the pain you know the low back pain uh, signals and um, so that you know the women get some relief from their from their low back pain so yeah. quite a lot of research has been whole, done yeah um gate therapy uh, yeah. a gate theory i should say yeah yeah so it's, it's like a distraction Yes, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, it's a mm. gate control theory. So yeah. uh, there, there's a couple of theories behind it, but the main one is a gate control theory. Mm. And, uh, and it's, you know, you don't use any drugs, you just use water. And, uh, and it gives, you know, women can still be mobile, you know, they mm. don't have an epidural, they can, it's, it's usually for malposition. So posterior labor, mm. asynclitic for, it's for low back pain. So you don't use it because it's quite, um, it can be painful. You know, like the, the, the injections themselves, yeah. um, you know, you get about 30 to 40 seconds of quite intense, um, you know, like a, 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 you know, sting, probably, you know, stronger than a sting. But then, you know, it goes away. It's only for those, you know, 30 or 40 seconds. Um, yeah. But then, you know, women often have, you know, relief for about uh, two to three hours mm. for, from their back pain. So they can actually labor, you know, and often women say, but the pain didn't go, the pain, I said, yes, you felt your contractions, you felt your normal labor but that back pain that was there that was there in between the contractions yes. that was really sort of um, you know um, very hard to sort of shift that um, that usually goes with the sterile water injections and it's yeah. transported get, for they they get hospitals you know yeah. it's just uh, it can it can be done you know anyway and again mm. you don't do any harm you can't do any harm with no. them mm. Just fabulous. Oh, you're fabulous. Um, now, uh, just for those that are live with us today, uh, if you have any questions for Bernadette, um, please do uh, type them into the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. There's that little button that says Q&A. Um, and because we will be winding up soon, so let us know if you've got any questions for her. Um, is there anything that we haven't covered off today that you'd like to um, also make mention of, Bernadette? Um, no, I mean, there's, you know, a lot of things, that, you know, it could be, you know, when I run the workshops on complementary therapies, it's a whole day. Um, but um, no, I think, yeah. I think it's just sort of for people to be aware there's other uh, modalities that are available and mm -hmm. um, that, you know, available for midwives and and for women, and it makes life easier Actually, for midwives a, and for women. Yeah, that, yeah, and that um, prompts a, a question I can think of. Um, so if you have got somebody starting out and there are so many different modalities that you could do some extra you know, education on, what do you think, if you were going to put them in some order of sort of usefulness and, and what do you think of somebody, you know, where would you start with all those modalities now looking back at them all? 
I think the easiest to probably, and the one that's really effective would be acupressure. And right. uh, like, okay. I'm not an acupuncturist, but, and I know you've got a few uh, acupuncturists that have been on you, um, you know, on, you know, your panelists as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that's really um, easy to learn right. and uh, yeah. easy to use and it's effective. Um, it, it really sort of, you know, it's transportable. So, you know, if there's probably one thing, uh, you know, the first one would be, um, you know, uh, would, would, would be, um, yeah, to do. To do that. And what would be maybe your second and third? Um, well, I, I use reflexology quite a lot. So the, okay. this, um, you know, and you don't have to be a full blown. We just when we did the course, like um, Suzanne Enzer, who is wonderful, who is a um, reflexologist and a midwife from the UK, came over and she ran the course. We had forty midwives at one stage that were all uh, trained in reflexology at the hosp at our hospital, and um, and you, you know, it's hands on. So, and you can show the partner. So one of the things I really do want to emphasize also is that when you use some of those techniques, you know, for example, acupressure, some of the reflexology techniques, you don't have to do it yourself as a midwife. You can actually show the partners. And it's really important to help them, you know, like to, for them to participate. And often, you know, they, they feel a bit like, oh, what can I do? What I can? So you give them a job to do. And they can say, well, I help. You know, I, um, you know, I've been contributing, you know, uh, you know, I've helped as well, you know, making that labor and that birth, um, you know, yeah. more, you know, comfortable. But, you know, they, they, those techniques are there if you need them. You know, I'm a great believer yes. of, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, women labor, if, if, if everything goes very well, you don't use anything, you don't need anything, but it's there if you do need it. We've had somebody come in and actually ask, can you explain what reflexology is? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I should have explained <laughs> that's, okay. that's right. I know. Yeah, we, we kind of assume we all know. Yeah, that's so, exactly yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So reflexology is um, um, used like working on, on the feet. So the feet uh, are a, um, a mirror or reflect different parts of the body. So uh, you work on the feet to, to, to be able to work on the rest of the body. So it's, um, it's a, a manual technique that, um, you know, will help, um, help people sort of you know you, you help rebalance um you know energy in the body but just working on the feet so it's like yes. some it's not massage you know you use some points and you use um well, it's uh, kind of like acupressure but specifically on the feet isn't it really? yeah it's not it's some, like you know we do similar. finger walking we do some you know some mm. assessments we there, there's some specific techniques that sort of uh, mm. you, you you use on the feet but you know basically you work on the feet to affect the rest of the body um, yeah. so I remember one particular labor um, I was the midwife with and, and this was a 44 year old woman having her first baby and um, her and her partner had really really rehearsed their reflexology I mean they just had it down pat he knew exactly what each point was and whatever she wanted she had her whole they had their own whole little code system going and uh, it was absolutely stunning I, I remember just going wow this is just you know I'll just sit back because yeah, you two absolutely. have got this covered yeah. and uh her birth was for a 44 year old prime up her birth was spectacular mm. um but it was it was very cool how much them as a couple had sort of rehearsed um the their communication on it and it was pretty amazing to watch it is off, and like, and you uh, know and it's you know <laughs> through the touch you know you're through the feet and the feet yeah. have got a lot of you know nerve endings and and uh, i mean there's a lot of you mm. know like um acupuncture points in the feet as well so you affect you know the, the the rest of the body just by working at the feet on the feet and uh and i think it's a marvelous it's a marvelous technique and and you know as you said you know participation by the partners it's something they can do together and uh you know like Absolutely. with the reflexology probably what i use most is like the relaxation techniques you know which is what women need in 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 labor and then like some specific techniques to sort of help you know help the labor along but um yeah it's um yeah it's a bit in, in 45 minutes it's a little bit difficult to go through <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i think really 45 hours <laughs> 
<laughs> and it would be good. Look, thank you so much, Bernadette. Um, you are just such a uh, reservoir of information. Um, it would be a, a wonderful to clone you. <laughs> and uh, or just we need to be like Matrix, where we just um, you know plug it in and go. Oh, there's all Bernadette's information. Yep, got that one. <laughs> <laughs> just fantastic. And uh, so thank you everybody who's live here today. Um, but particularly thank you, Bernadette. I know it's early where you are. And uh, we appreciate you um, spending your breakfast time with us today. And yes, and thank you to those who've turned up live. We've got um, one last live webinar um, next week, and then that's the end of the 2020 webinars, which have, and we're now fully booked up till May, which is insane. Um, and uh, so, look, it's just absolutely valuable having your your input. Thank you. Thank so you very much. much for inviting me. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And bye to our audience because we can't do it without you. Oh, we've got a oh we've <laughs> we've got a question coming, but it's just a thank you. Yeah. Um from Anita. Thank you guys. And uh it would be a little boring if we didn't have an audience to be talking to. So um thank you everybody and we'll see you back next week. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>